Good, good. Um, so let's uh, let's go ahead and start to kick things off. I think our first thing we need to do is to uh, go ahead and pick a couple of scribes for a meeting. Um, do we have any volunteers? Pretty easy process. You just kind of type a little bit about what you hear. Ideally, we'd like to have two people do this so that there's no, um, uh, there isn't any, you know, problem if one of our scribes wants to go and talk. I'll go ahead and post the link also to the Google Doc here. Please go ahead and add your name to the Google Doc uh, as well, just to kind of let us know that you're here. So I'll add my name right now. Uh, Ash is here. That's great. And what is going on here? There we go. Super. Okay. Um, so Ash has volunteered to scribe. Can I get uh, one more? Somebody, anybody? Oh, okay, Lakshmi, awesome. Thank you. All right, so we'll go ahead and uh, kick it off. Um, as before, we will start with our, our introductions. We have some discussion on the list about whether or not we should move away from everybody doing intros, but uh, since that hasn't been settled yet, we'll, we'll start. Um, I'll go ahead and, and start first, um, and then I'll be going by the order of the names inside I have the, the Google Doc, so once again, please do add yourself there so that I can get an update. Um, so uh, this week has been pretty busy for in Toto Tough, uh, things like this. We've discussed uh, like um, moving from uh, uh, up to the graduation uh, for Tough and moving up to um, incubation uh, for in Toto and had some conversations around that. Um, and we've had some some other good things happen with adoption that uh, unfortunately I can't talk publicly about yet. So I think next here is Justin Cormack. Um, yeah, so um, I've been working out, yeah, um, well, trying to put together a small group with Steve Lasker on um, making reworking notary we've had some conversations over the over the months with it about reworking notary to be um a registry native protocol um so if anyone's interested in that can they ping me this is um basically so that the notary metadata is stored in a container registry rather than as a separate store which means it's possible to move around from one place to another um and we're which is a large uh, requested um thing from a lot of people around um usability of containers in a lot of situations where you're using multiple registries so if you're interested in that at all please uh, come and talk to me um or steve lasker if you know steve um and we should be putting together some meetings um starting next week hopefully great i know i'm certainly interested so i look forward to joining um awesome okay a uh, lot um hi Nothing to report on security this week. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, Ash. Uh, so I've addressed some of the comments in the OPA assessment doc. Um, I think as per, your, as per your recommendation, Justin. So if everything looks okay, I've addressed uh, like regarding the GitHub issues for the uh, points in the recommendation, I've tried to consolidate those into a single issue. If you think we need separate issues for each point, just uh, like if it warrants that we can do that too. Uh, but I, yeah, just let me know what you guys think about it. Okay. I think a good way for us to perhaps go forward with this would be for you and I and Sarah to have a call because I've been talking quite a bit with her about things because she really was leading a lot of the in total assessment and we're trying to, you know, make that all be fairly uniform. Okay. So, um, what, why don't we set up a, a time to do that? Yeah, sure. Sounds good. Yep. All right, thanks. Um, Radu. Is the plan to present that uh, one of these meetings once we finalize yeah. it? Um, 
So the, the plan is, is that at one of the TOC meetings, when SIG Security gives an update, they'll talk about what their findings were from the OPA assessment. Okay. Um, and the way this happens is somewhat uh, TBD. I was under the impression that we would need to present that earlier, like uh, a week or so ago, but um, later on it was discussed that we would probably do that at a later time. So yeah, I, I was like waiting on September 3rd for an OPA update, but it, it didn't happen. So I thought what, 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 what went wrong there? So yeah. Cool. Yeah. Sorry about that. Um, I think it was, I, I was reading too much into an email that was sent that there were two conflicting email chains. So anyway, okay. um, but let's, let's move on. Um, so Radu. Uh, hey everyone, I'm working on integrating Tough and Intoto with the CNAP project, and I'm also interested in the RFX project and the Midori um, advancements. So uh, I'm working on specifically integrating uh, both Tough and Intoto in a Go project, and also interested in running the verification process in a container for reproducible verification. So, yeah, thanks. Excellent. Yeah, I think that'll be of interest of a lot of people here, and. Obviously, don't re uh, don't hesitate to reach out to myself or others if you have any questions or stumbling blocks or things like that. Sure. Thank um, thanks. Uh, Lakshmi. Yeah. Uh, so I addressed uh, Sarah's comments on uh, uh, new member space, and uh, that is now merged. The PR is now merged. Okay. Awesome. Thanks, um, Christian. Hi there. Um, actually, I I have nothing to report on the security side, but I did attend a webinar that brought up a pretty good point about default configurations. And I was wondering if we have a list of uh, insecure default configurations for a lot of popular um, open source softwares that um, my, my take would be to put it into some of our learning docs to make sure that when we present to students, you know, it's something that we say, hey, this is not secure. Let's make sure to customize it. So I was wondering if we have anything like that in the SIG security. Um, I don't hear anybody else jumping in. I'll say I'm not aware of it, but I think we should have it. And I think okay. this is a great, this would be a great uh, thing to create an issue about and to start a discussion on. I, I, okay. I think this is a, a excellent observation. There was yeah, some conversation um, at, one of the conferences I was at recently about working with open source projects that in their docs that they are to provide a secure configuration point or point out areas in their default configuration that are not necessarily known to be insecure, but if there was a more secure option and why somebody would want to do it. So I don't know if that effort went anywhere, but that was one of the points of topic that we had. And is actually, this like uh, Emily Moxie Foxy, whatever your username is? Yes, that's me. Oh, all right, sorry, just trying to put a just trying to put a name to the voice. Sorry, go ahead. Um, oh yeah, actually, one of the points in that webinar too was that some of a lot of uh, projects do. Uh, one of the things that they uh, identified were like AWS and Google. They had recommendations, but the tendency was that users would tend to just blow through those and unfortunately go in with insecure configurations. It's pretty interesting. Uh, not a lot of content, but pretty interesting. Great. Yeah, I think that would be a good thing to discuss on, discuss on an issue. Um, Mark. Hey, guys. Nothing new on this side. Uh, for those of you that are interested in the privacy side, I thought I would just mention there's a public comment uh, period that just started for the NIST privacy document, if that's of interest. So hop in and offer your opinions. That's it for me. Great. Great. Thanks. Um, Carlos. Sure. Um, well, pretty much uh, we continue working on this uh, Docker technology. And we um, need uh, some help with uh, Docker, Docker Content Trust and Docker Notary. I don't know if uh, the guys from Docker are on the uh, forum. If you can just yeah, send me yeah. a couple of names. It'd yes, be great um, that's, that's me, Justin Comac. OK, I can yeah, talk to you thing. in a couple of minutes or send you via email my uh, well, questions. And we can yeah, sure. talk. I think. Thank you, Justin. Awesome. Um, OK, uh, Brandon. 
Hey, so um, mostly been working on continuing the container encryption stuff. We've been working with Red Hat to integrate it with the stack too. And we've started, you know, trying to see whether all the registries um, are kind of up to date with the OCR images and stuff like that. Um, so that's going well. Um, actually, so Radu, don't mind if I send you a, a message after that. I'm kind of interested in the CNEP stuff. Um, and this is kind of semi-related to uh, just in the discussions that I wanted to have on Monday as well. <laughs> so, yep, that's it for me. Okay, great. Um, Emily. Hi, so some great news is regarding Security Day. We have 66 registrations as of yesterday, 22 submitted CFPs and another 18 that are in progress. Um, we also now have a total of three diamond sponsors and one gold sponsor. Sponsorship sales are going to close on September 20th, so let um, Kathy or Amy know if anybody else is interested in sponsoring, and you can drop that into the SIG Security Events channel. Uh, that's about it for updates. Wow, and that was fantastic news. Um, terrific. Um, okay, uh, Christian Kemper. Hi there, I'm Christian. I work for Google Cloud Security. Nothing new to report for, for this group for this week. Okay, thank you. Um, Avanav. Hey guys, um, I'm uh, from Frame.io. Nothing new to report on security side other than working on Salco on Kubernetes. Okay, um, thanks. John? Nothing to note at this time. All right, JJ. Hey, uh, I think I think the security six security event. Uh, Emily, uh, Emily gave an update. Um, we do have uh, regular sync with uh, Joe and Liz, uh, where we get the directions from. Uh, for uh, some of the prioritization and work. Uh, we, I'll keep you posted on that. We have one that's coming up. So for the next meeting, I think I'll be, basically be able to uh, bring some information back, but it's also in, it'll also be good to get what the group wants as clarity from TOC as well. Um, that's, that's about what I have. Uh, okay. I, do have I do have an agenda item uh, to discuss at the end. Uh, Hope, hope we can get to it, but I added it in the agenda doc. Okay, sounds good. Yeah, um, we'll get to those later. Okay, uh, Erica. Hey there. Um, ben, uh, in the updates from the Kubernetes policy working group, we are a couple items. We have, you know, progress we've made on some formal verification for the policy configurations, starting with the RBAC access controls, kind of have a plan and we're starting with some of the modeling for that. Uh, the proposal you, you can see in, uh, was merged into this SIG security repo under policy. So check it out if you're interested in that. Some other related work with uh, we're kind of just keeping tabs on OPA and its gatekeeper project, which is moving. I think they're making plans to kind of get it towards a GA um, stance. It's and investigating its possible use as a recommended replacement for P pod security policies. And also, I guess, uh, KubeCon North America in San Diego in November, the schedule was announced. We will have, I think, in the Contributor Summit, we're looking to do a workshop with some of the verification work. Great. And that's me. Awesome, okay. Uh, TK, I think uh, you're the last one who's put their name down. I'm the last one, but I don't have anything uh, new to report. So, <laughs> to your main agenda items, thanks. <clears throat> Wow.
you're muted, Justin. Oh, well, thank you. That's, uh, that explains why no one was answering. I said, uh, okay, thanks. And uh, has anybody been missed? Uh, anybody whose name isn't on here or that I accidentally skipped that wants to give an update? Okay, um, so now that we've completed the initial check-ins, now um, we are supposed to have check-ins from partner SIGs and working groups. Um, so does anyone from Kubernetes SIG auth uh, want to say anything? Okay. I, uh, I can only report on some of the discussion we were talking about with the pod security policies. Okay, well, can you, um, Eric, Eric, can you post a link to that in the meeting notes? I can because I can't actually, yeah. I couldn't actually find I tried to find it in three minutes and two minutes, but I couldn't immediately. I can also it. add links to the meeting notes and related issues. I'll go find them. Thanks. Okay. Um, Right, uh, the policy working group. Um, so I guess, Erica, would you like to talk about that or would someone Yeah, else? I think it's basically the same as what my personal update was. That was kind of okay. like. Uh, how about this Kubernetes security audit working group? I'm not personally familiar with that uh, myself, I don't believe. Um, Okay, we, we, hearing we, had one of, we had one of the people in here a few weeks ago, but I think they're not here. Don't okay. Know. How about NIST Big Data Working Group? Yeah, so we are working on the overview document for that. Um, we have a tech writer who got assigned for that. Probably not be too of too much interest to this group at this point, but It'll just make it easier to read the eight volumes of that when it finally gets out of NIST review later this year. Okay. That'll be good bedtime reading, I'm sure. Um, awesome. Okay. Uh, how about the, uh, now it's time for the PSA for meeting facilitator. Uh, JJ, I think you're going to leave this off. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, first of all, thank you for, uh, the few of the people that uh, raised their hand to be the meeting facilitator. So it's tremendously useful both for uh, the person facilitating and for the team uh, to get a broader understanding. So uh, main idea is to create, become a full on distributed system. So anybody should have the context around the meeting at any time uh, eventually, but I think uh, we do need some form of uh, guidance in that aspect. So there will be a few people running this. Uh, the other agenda item that I had, uh, should I go over that as well, Justin? Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. Do, you, do, you, um, do you want to, so the, the three, there's three facilitators who Brandon, me, and, and Jerry have volunteered so far. Um, yeah. If anyone else wants yeah, to. And I'm somehow the first one doing it. Uh, <laughs> I don't mind. <laughs> you should add yourself there. <laughs> yeah, I should probably be added there. But, um, yep, yep, yep. Uh, I think you so should thank open, you so much. Uh, open yeah. a full request. Yeah. Um, Justin. Will do, will do. Yes. Um, so there's a list of, if anyone wants to become one, there's a list of criteria to check off and um, it's relatively um, straight, I think it's relatively straightforward set of um, things that you've, part that you, to show that you've participated in, um, in the processes of the group so you know what's going on. Yeah. Um, but yeah, um, yeah, JJ, do you want to go through the, your agenda item? Uh, sure. So, uh, one of the things that I, uh, this relates to the initial comment that uh, Kapos is making as well in terms of uh, scrapping the early intro. Uh, so, one of the things that I noticed in our group is uh, there, there are people with varying expertise in different areas of uh, security. So, uh, I was thinking if 
as a team uh, if we had a page where we could basically list our name uh, the subject matter expertise that uh, each one of us have uh, and our willingness to be approached for that area of expertise whether it's questions comments or uh, injecting them into like a review process during that area uh, if that can be specified then uh, it helps all of us tremendously in terms of like just uh, being efficient at getting stuff done uh, so that was a thought i just wanted to bounce that idea off what this allows us to do is uh, also skip uh, intros because at any given time people will know who people are and then uh, we don't have to keep doing the intro every single time we meet um, so that was an idea that i just wanted to bring it up to this team to see uh, if what we think a what we think about it uh, b if there is someone who's passionate and like it's not going to happen by itself if there is someone who's passionate in driving that uh, effort to completion i definitely think have knowing what people have expertise in is really useful if you want mm -hmm. to find someone to help you with something or to for people yeah. to ask you know if 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 people need to understand an issue or something like that i think that's it is definitely helpful to have a go to kind of list of yeah. what they're doing because often it's difficult especially especially now there's quite a few people mm -hmm. and people have difficult if people are not around constantly they won't necessarily remember who it was at the meeting who was interested in x that they're also interested in Mm -hmm. So I, I'm just wondering because um, I was thinking that if someone would be interested in, or wants expertise in something, um, should we say that they should create an issue and then we can have a discussion on it so, you know, multiple people can chime in? Um, in that way, I... Also, because it seems like the SIG security Slack channel might be... That's true, yeah. Yeah, uh, I think it's good to have the the list that you're suggesting, JJ. That's really yeah. useful. But I think the mm -hmm. stand up is more not just the introduction, it's more about what people are doing. And I think that's yeah. better as well. So having both could be useful, but replacing the stand-up for the list, um, that would not be really helpful. That's what I think. Mm -hmm. I mean, maybe we just need to stream, no, okay. yeah. stream, streamline the stand-up so that people put their names down on the list if they've got something to say yeah. before, the, before the start of the meeting, rather, so we, it's just quicker and more efficient. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, I mean, I think both would be, I mean, I obviously think both would be useful. Uh, but uh, any volunteers for getting the initial list on our site, uh, which basically means work involved in uh, sometimes pinging people, uh, getting a page in place where people can come and add stuff so i i have kind of a question about this i'm, I'm imagining stepping in so what yes. sort of schema look like like how do how do people talk about what it is they've done without just i mean like linking to their linkedin or their wikipedia page or whatever it is um good question so that's another thing that uh, when we were discussing that came up also is there a should we be prescriptive about a category of things that we would want people to say like this I'm expert at this or or should we want to let it like free flowing in terms of like 
describe what it is in which case you can put your wikipedia page linkedin page linkedin post uh, but the more specific it is the easier it is for us to tap into somebody for help the more generic it is it the more descriptive it is it's just not going to be effective to say uh, like say for example security audit uh, and i want to get guidelines for audit then capus uh, i can ping, ping you versus like going and looking at the wikipedia and linkedin to figure out capus may be able to help me with the security audit question <laughs> right so uh, so good question i mean like i don't know i just want to hear people start out but, uh, yes so you triggered something that i i've been thinking about which is we have um this landscape and we have these notions of projects and since you know maybe one way to do this would be to have people signal that they're interested in things related to either projects or gaps in the landscape where we hope to one day have a project because then it pretty naturally falls along the guidelines of the group here which is all at least um allegedly uh you know cloud native interested yeah yeah now i'd like to yeah i'll uh, sh shut my mouth now and wait for others to listen to others in terms of uh, what they feel uh, i agree with i mean i i agree with that suggestion i think that makes that makes more sense that's a bit more prescriptive and more meaningful and and very contextual I, yeah, maybe it needs to be in the sort of size of sub projects or something. I mean, say, the, for example, the fact that Brandon's Brandon's working on encrypted container images is useful in the short term while he's working, you know, over the year or so while he's working on that or whatever. And other people might be interested. That's not a project per se, but it's an area of focus within a project or a couple or more than one project. And, um, and things like audit is a kind of cross-cutting thing, you, or supply chain security is a cross-cutting thing that you might want to say you're interested in separately from project. Yeah. So what if like, like JJ, you may already have this, you define like these 10 things that you need expertise in, mm -hmm. and can subscribe to those categories so that'll be much like you can just say i care about audits or i don't know security some whatever 10 categories and people can then say okay my, my expertise is audits b c d whatever it is so that could be helpful too if you define like the high level categories for the expertise that you're interested in um uh, yeah i mean i'd be happy to uh since you raised since you sort of raised your hand, uh, I can work, I can sort of ping you to create that category uh, with you and uh, go back with the uh, capos. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Uh, I think uh, I can follow. Uh, I mean, Capos, if you want, if you're taking the lead, I'll be able, to, I'll uh, definitely be available to help. Uh, but if you want me to, just let me know. Uh, sure, yeah, go go ahead. I just, it's your um, your idea. I'd, I'd rather see your vision and, and help to make it a reality. Impose okay. mine. All right, sounds, sounds good. So we can follow through on this uh, offline in Slack and issues then. I'll, I'll spin off an issue. Awesome. Okay. Um, so do we have any other items here on the agenda? It doesn't, I don't spot anything. Is anything that we missed or anything someone wants to discuss? Um, I have a quick question related to how SIG security works with other CNCF SIGs. So there's a newly formed uh, CNCF SIG app delivery and we're, we're uh, very early in the process of defining everything that the SIG is working on. But uh, essentially, it's 
uh, working on uh, the life cycle of a cloud native application, everything from definition to deployment and rollout, automation, platform. And I'm wondering what's the relationship of SIG security with other uh, CNCF six with respect to how they uh, either recommend security measures or anything related to how they how they operate together, how they work. I think we don't really know. Yes, is is the kind of straightforward answer because. Um, we were the first SIG and um, we haven't interacted with SIG storage, so I think we need to work this out still. Uh, um. uh, specifically, I'm, I'm asking because there are a bunch of areas that are interconnected. There's the security story for the artifacts project, there's the security story for uh, CNAB and m most of them are in the same space and I'm really looking forward not to duplicate efforts in all of these projects. We can definitely do um, reviews of those projects because that's something that we are doing. So if you want, if we want to prioritize having a security review of those things, but if they, I don't know, if they, for the bits where they're being designed, I don't know if we want to have, a, I mean, obviously I'm interested and other people are interested in the work that's going on, but I don't know if it makes sense for SIG Security to have an official role working on that or whether just the people, some of the people involved want to work on that. I, that that also makes sense. I just wanted to bring. That. I don't know, JJ. What do you think? Um, sorry, can you can you repeat that? I lost like the last. Let's cut the sorry, I was just saying that we we haven't officially had any working relationships with other CNCF SIGs because they because they're all quite new compared to us. So. Mm -hmm. um, we could obviously do audits of projects that SIG apps are interested in having audited because that's something that we definitely do, but I, I'm not sure if we have any way, kind of, way of having a, any other kind of working relationship other than people in this group who are interested to work with them. I don't know, kind of, I don't know if there's any official way we should work together or could work together. So, uh, when we started this group, one of the ideas that we had floating around was like people from our group representing in their meetings and then uh, trying to poach somebody. Like there was like active poaching happening from their meeting to like show up on ours. Um, it only, it's not scalable model by any means, right? And I think it's just going to uh, involve a lot more on people than on process. Um, so short answer is uh, it's a good idea. I don't have a good way to make that happen. Uh, I could, uh, in, in the TOC meeting, we could try and bring that up in terms of like if they have any better suggestions to I love collaboration between between different six, uh, but it's yeah, it is. It's good. It, if that doesn't happen, uh, I I see your point. If that doesn't happen, it'll get more and more divisive and more and more isolated uh, within the CNCF group itself. Uh, I would encourage you to raise this as an issue on the email thread to CNCF because uh, it's pretty valid and I think Liz, Liz at least might have some inputs and su suggestions on this. Uh, I'll chime in. I will definitely chime in based off of our understanding on that but uh, it will be good for you to bring this up to the broader CNCF. Speaking of this uh... 
different categories and such. I brought up an issue a while back, never heard much of a comments on that. That was, that has to do with the edge uh, security, whether we should be concerned from the CNCF perspective, whether the edge security should be part of our scope. And if so, how do we deal with it? I think I referred uh, a Linux foundation that addresses the the edge security at that time. And I was wondering whether we have collectively, we feel like we should be liaising with those folks. Um, my understanding on the last time that I met with them uh, in a conference that they haven't done very much, but they are concerned about their edge security. They would be very receptive, I suppose, in that perspective. Anyone has any comments? They, they just released a white paper which was posted on our Slack about 10 minutes before this meeting. Um, so I had, a, I had a quick chance to look at it. I, uh, um, I mean, uh, I'm interested in edge security because we're, I'm working on various issues of it, but um, um, It's, it's a kind of niche interest, I guess. A lot of people are not interested in it. Yeah, I, unfortunately I have not yet joined the Slack group. Probably I missed out on that <laughs> comments or anything, but I um, personally I feel that there are more and more interest on the edge processing and many different, from many different technology perspectives. So that's kind of coming to the ecosystem regardless of where we reside. It, uh, it will exist. The question is whether we are, we do have the capability as well as the interest to, um, you know, include that as part of our at least concern or something that we should be looking for because it's very difficult, I think, getting very difficult to put a demarcation line as prominent to, uh, to make it, uh, you know, completely segregated from each other from cloud versus the edge, especially from a security perspective. Okay, well maybe what we can do is, um, it feels like this is an issue that should be discussed in a subgroup that's that's interested and in focused on edge. Um, yeah. I, you know, I am a person who is interested in this, but I can imagine that others on the call may or may not be. Um, so maybe what we can do is is move that to a side discussion and arrange other meetings for it and, and have um, have more follow up there. Is there any there, other? There are, also, there are also potentially some edge projects that we might be interested in in CNCF, I guess. Um, I'm certainly uh, aware of some down the road potentially. Yeah, that would be great. Um, we definitely moving further into that purview, I think would make sense. I, I don't know that, you know, maybe, maybe I'm being premature with it, but it feels like, um, right now we shouldn't probably dive too far into that, into that rabbit hole on the call. Um, is there, are there other agenda items that people want to discuss, um, in this meeting? Um, this one that I, I wrote down, it's kind of, I, I think it's more clarification for myself. I wasn't sure, um, I may have missed a meeting on what was happening with the current security assessment uh, with KeyClub and Falco, whether are we kind of just um, pushing KeyClub back and then are we doing Falco next? We're, I think we're waiting for guidance from the, the TAC, which uh, JJ is hopefully going to give us next week. Okay. On how they want us to prioritize things. Okay. My, All right. My, this my, sounds good. Yeah, I think I miss I miss the discussion on that. So yeah, that's good. Yeah. yeah. Cool. All right. Um, anything else for this meeting? Don't, well, don't, thanks, forget to, don't, don't yeah. forget to submit your talks before Friday. For... Yes. <laughs> yep, yep. And, uh, and promote, promote that. Uh, the more we get, the better it is. Thank you so much. All right. Sounds good, everybody. Enjoy your 20 minutes uh, of time back. And talk to everybody next week.